The Arizona State Society is proud to sponsor this unique contribution to the oral history of our state. I can think of no people better qualified than Mo Udall and Barry Goldwater to help us with this task. Both the Udalls and the Goldwaters are authentic pioneer Arizonans. Their colorful families have built and shaped the Arizona that prospers today. Both were presidential candidates who through their honest and forthright campaigns have carved a lasting place in this nation's history. While they reside at opposite ends of the political spectrum, they do have a great deal in common. For example, I noted that Senator Goldwater, chairman of the Armed Services Committee, has a bumper sticker on his car with an American flag waving that says, I support the right to bear arms. Well, Mo Udall, chairman of the Interior Committee, similarly has a bumper sticker where his has a picture of Smokey the Bear and says, I support the right to arm bears. At this time, I'd like to introduce our moderator for this evening, a longtime member and officer of the Arizona State Society, and currently Director of Congressional Relations for NASA, Jack Murphy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. It's a great pleasure for me to be able to participate in this particular evening's activities because I've had the good fortune of knowing both of these gentlemen for a good many years. I first met Senator Goldwater in 1949 when he was a member of the City Council in Phoenix, and I had occasions to talk things over with uh, Mo Udall when he was uh, playing basketball for the University of Arizona. The thing that I think is interesting about these two gentlemen is the time they have spent not only in Arizona, but for Arizona, and doing the things that have made Arizona a great state that it is. I think one of the interesting things about it is that uh, they're able to joke about the differences between themselves They've had uh, many things to think about together for the state and many positions of opposition that they've discussed on a national issue. I think one of the points that uh, has been made once, I think, by Mo was that <clears throat> he said that the ultimate conservative is the Goldwater conservative. That's the one who doesn't want to see anything happen for the first time. <laughs> Besides a wealth of humor, these gentlemen uh, also sub share a wealth of history. Many people have uh, heard the stories that uh, they've been, or I hope will be telling tonight, because all I want to do is just get them started and uh, suggest that uh, one of them should tell the story about their grandfathers and how they uh, helped one another in the early days. Mose uh, indicates that it's Barry's story, and Barry says, well, it's really Mose's story. So I'm going to let you two decide who tells the story of the grandfathers. I'll start out and let him finish the... Uh... The, Mor the Mormons were great colonizers. After they settled parts of Utah in the 1860s, 1870s, they started moving out to California. They had colonies in Colorado and New Mexico. And they sent a large contingent down to Arizona, which was led, the, the group that founded St. John's, where I grew up, was led by my grandfather, David K. Udall. And his uh, first assistant, incidentally, was Miles Romney, who was the grandfather of George Romney, who ran for president. But in any event, the Mormons were being persecuted. One of the great uh, issues in Congress, you go back and read the record in the 1880s, 1890s, they were complaining about these Mormons who were practicing polygamy, and uh, there were great criticisms made, and uh, they decided to prosecute some of the leaders. So my grandfather, David Udall, was thrown in jail at the Prescott uh, Territorial Jail awaiting trial on charges of polygamy, relating to polygamy. And a local merchant uh, in that city, uh, who respected the Mormons and thought they were energetic and industrial folks, industrious people, uh, uh, took pity on him and signed his bail bond so he could go home and uh, go home and take care of his family awaiting trial. And the merchant's name was Baron Goldwater. Is that your grandfather, Mike. Barry? Mike. Mike. Barry told this story one night here in Washington, and I said, well, that's fine, what, but what the hell have you done for your generation? When Haldeman and Ehrlichman were in trouble, you didn't bail them out. <laughs> No, the, uh, the, the story that I always heard was that uh, my old grandfather, who was the mayor of Prescott at that time, uh, got a horse, got the key to the jail from the sheriff, and went down that night and got Mr. Udall out of the jail and put him on the horse and said, get the hell out of town and don't come back. <laughs> You, 
you can't win. You can't win. I always tell, I get back at Barry with some of the stories. You know, Barry's uh, father and grandfather, I guess. Was this the peddler that Everett Dirksen talked about when he nominated you? Mm -hmm. We're great merchants, but uh, Barry's father married a beautiful young woman who came west, and she was an Episcopalian. And most people assume somehow that the Goldwaters were Jews, and his father was, but uh, the kids, Barry uh, and his brother and the other in the family, were raised as Episcopalians. And Harry Golden in 1964, when it was obvious that Barry was going to be nominated, said, somehow I always knew that our first Jewish president would be an Episcopalian. <laughs> Then, then Barry, Barry's got to tell you the golf story. It was either him or his brother who went to play golf. Give him that one. Which one? That nine holes. Oh, that one. Well, that was very funny. Uh, my brother plays a lot of golf with Bob Hope. And this was right after the war, World War II. And they went up to play golf on a, at a place called Irving on the Hudson. And Bob signed his name and the pro said, I'm sorry, Mr. Goldwater, but... Uh, you can't play here. This uh, is for Gentiles only. Bob said, well, can I play nine holes? I'm only half Jew. <laughs> I, I, you know. <laughs> People always thought, "My, your brother must be the smartest thing around to think of something like that. So I asked uh, an old fellow who was on a radio show years ago, can you top that? You know, he knew all the jokes. And I told him this joke, and I, you know, he maintained there was only seven basic jokes. Well, I said, Do you, have you ever heard this one before? And I told him that. And he said, yeah, that was used back when they were building the Temple of Solomon. And the Gentiles would come over and wear an apron and said, I'm half Jew, can I get a job? <laughs> I used to, I want to get off this subject, but I used to follow on with Sammy Davis Jr., the comedian who joined the Jewish faith and married this Swedish actress and was involved in an accident and lost his eye. And he goes to the golf course and he said, Sammy, what's your handicap? He said, handicap, man, I'm a one-eyed Negro Jew. <laughs> and I used to follow by saying in Arizona, I'm a one-eyed Mormon Democrat and I don't need, <laughs> I don't need any additional handicap. Well, get down to something serious. Uh, I guess I've known Mo uh, most of his life. I used to when I was a lot younger, he, this was before World War II, to drive my car up there, fly an airplane up to St. John's and show the, the first the grammar school, then the high school, moving pictures of the Grand Canyon. And, and that's where I met uh, Moe's father and mother. And I'll never forget one night in her home for dinner, a good deal later when I was campaigning for Howard Pyle. And she looked at me and she said, young man, you're never going any place as a Republican. <laughs> and I thought she was right. <laughs> and there's times I think she was. <laughs> well, you know, I think a lot of newcomers to Arizona don't realize our political history, but we were essentially a one-party democratic state for years and years. And this guy came along in 1952. After the war, people were starting to move west to Arizona. Folks like John Rhodes and Betty came out from Kansas and settle down in Mesa and places. But uh, to get anywhere in politics, you had to be a Democrat almost for That's years right. and years and decades. But by about 1952, it all came together. And uh, there was a, Barry had helped Howard Powell run for governor two years earlier and busted that rule that Republicans couldn't be governor in Arizona. And two years later, he got the crazy idea of running against the majority leader of the United States Senate, Ernest McFarland. And he was trying to recruit a ticket so he'd be a little bit stronger and uh, have some company in this uh, uphill crazy thing he was doing. And they called Mesa, and there was a young lawyer there named John Rhodes. And he said, John, why don't you run for Congress? And I heard John tell this story, and I'll probably botch it. But John said, hell, I don't want to go to Congress. And Barry said, don't worry, you won't. 